Hey folks, welcome back. Back out here at one of my favorite spots, as you can see behind me, back out of my sawmill. I was just in my shop up at the house a few minutes ago. I was making some more of these, and you guys probably know this can be a bit of a chore at times. These are stickers. These go between the uh, between the lumber that I mill. So good thing is I ran out of them, and usually that's a good thing because that means I've been making lots of lumber. In my case, I made a whole pile of them here, and so uh, I'm going to take those in in just a minute. But what I'm out here doing today and why I brought you guys along is I'm going to talk about one of the benefits of owning a sawmill like this. Now, I used to be a regular at the lumber yard, and to be honest with you, I probably still am, but for other reasons. I don't go there to buy lumber. I buy all kinds of other uh, building equipment, uh, building materials there. Anyways, back to my story. Why owning a sawmill is great is because I am renovating parts of my house right now. And all the little trim pieces, like uh, I'm putting down some new flooring here shortly. I'm going to need baseboard trim. I'm also going to need uh, casing to go around some doors. And I'm going to need some trim to uh, go under some cabinets. Well, up until this point, I would have had to go to the lumber yard and uh, buy all that. That's great and all, but as you can imagine, that adds up. And so when you're trying to justify the purchase of a sawmill like this one, this is my Woodland Mills, my HM130, Think about all the savings you're gonna have and not having to go and buy lumber. In my case, I basically need two things. Well, three things. I need a source of wood, and as you guys can see around me, I don't have a shortage of that, so I got that. The second thing I need is this green thing behind me, the sawmill, and the third thing I need is a planer. And I've got a little uh, DeWalt, uh, what is it, a 12 or 13 inch planer, does the job just fine. Having those three things really allows me to put the hurting on the savings, or at least, in other words, allows me to save some money. What's great about that is it allows me to justify that purchase a lot more easily. I can't exactly remember how much I paid for that, but it was a few thousand dollars a few years ago. And to be honest, at the time I was thinking to myself, gee, that's an awful lot of lumber at the, uh, at the lumber yard. Well, I can tell you I've paid for that thing probably, I couldn't even tell you, probably 10 times over, probably more. And so uh, if you're justifying purchasing one of those, Think about the projects you got coming up and think about all the times you're going to have to say, nope, no lumber yard for me today. That's the case for me. Today, what I got ahead of me is I've got a few logs and these are logs you probably saw me put up here. They're fresh ones right here. Got a few fresh logs here that I'm going to uh, make some baseboard trim out of. That's what I'm up against today. I think I'm going to cut it about three quarters, three quarters of an inch by uh, probably about four inches. And then that'll allow for a little bit of shrinkage. Um, once I allow this to dry, air dry, what I do is then I run it on the planer. Uh, once I run it on the planer, that'll take all these little marks out of it. You guys can probably see that right there. You guys see that? My hands are. Just some little chatter there. Uh, the chatter is probably because of my blade. Uh, if you've seen other videos of mine, you know that I don't exactly throw out a blade when one of the teeth break off. I resharpen it and use it until its life is over. So if that was a fresh blade, maybe I wouldn't get that chatter. But regardless, I'm going to plane it. And uh, that's after I let it air dry. I'll plane it down to the finished thickness, about a half inch or so. Probably put some sort of a bevel on it to make it look nice. And there we go. Saved a few bucks. So if you're up for it, you take pride in your work and you really like going through the whole process of going from tree to uh, tree to finish work. Well, this might be the purchase for you. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking before I bore you guys to tears. Let's get down to it. We got logs, we got a sawmill, and we got a few minutes, so let's do it. Now hold on just one sec. I did see a comment come up, and I can't remember how long ago it is. My memory's good, but short. But the comment came up, and it was more or less a question. This bug's interrupting my little talk here. Okay. It was a question about the scale, and let's go and have a look at it here. Here's the scale on my Woodland Mills HM130, and you guys can see it's quite dirty, and that's because it's never moved. In all honesty, I have never moved this scale since I put it there when I bought the mill. Probably I moved it within the first week when I was learning this thing, but in all honesty, the only thing you're probably ever going to adjust, and to be honest, I've only ever adjusted it one other time, was this right here, this knob. This, probably due to vibration, it loosened off one time and the scale dropped. This right here is what you're going to adjust, this knob, and ultimately this red line, to reflect whatever height your blade is cutting at. So if you're unsure, what you can do, set it at a given board size, and let's just say I set it at, well, I don't know what that is, but let's say I set it at 5 inches. What I'm reading off of is the left-hand side. See that number on the left there? The 5. 
that means that five when i cut the board i should be able to take my tape measure over to it and measure a four or a five inch profile it should be five inches across if for whatever reason it's five and a quarter or four and three quarters four and seven eighths whatever if it's not exactly five i'm going to come over loosen that knob off and adjust it accordingly if for whatever reason my blade just cut this cant here and it was four and three quarters i would come back up here loosen off this knob and move it to the four and three quarter inch mark next i would cut again double check is it now accurate if it is bingo you're on the money that's how you do it now if for whatever reason you're still struggling because you're trying to cut uh, i don't know three and three sixteenths well let's have a look at the scale there is no sixteenths of an inch here. There is no eighths of an inch here. There is quarter inches. One, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, two. Therefore, make your life easy. Do what I do. Cut it down so you're having a minimum quarter inch gap or quarter inch difference uh, between pieces. So if you're going to cut inch and a quarter, make the next piece inch and a half. Uh, go up by a quarter is what I'm trying to say. Go up by a half, go up by an inch. Don't, uh, don't try to make your life too complicated by trying to read between the lines and cut an eighth of an inch off a board. Uh, you're probably not going to have good results. just happened I nearly forgot to lower the log stops these things right here I've hit them but I haven't hit them for geez probably a year nearly and so I just about cleaned them off there because I made my first cut my second cut and this cut I was gonna lower them but then I got thinking of something else and yeah anyways that was almost a disaster some of you guys have commented in the past on some of my other sawmill videos mentioning that I should make those log stops out of solid oak or some sort of solid hardwood. I think I got it because I came very close to the end of that blade. So that would have made good video, but wouldn't have made me very happy. Anyways, back to it.
we did it. So, a little bit of dust there, made a bit of lumber, life is good, right? Now, uh, before I go ahead and cut one of these other ones, you'll notice this one right here. Now, I don't know the exact diameter across there, it's probably eight or nine inches. I tend to keep the nice straight, the bigger diameter uh, logs that I have here, and keep in mind this is probably one of the bigger ones. I tend to keep those and I leave them in case I need bigger dimensional lumber. I can't make a big piece of lumber out of a small piece of lumber, and thus I hold on to these guys. So what I'm probably going to do with this one, because I don't have any need for like a 2x8 or let's say even a 1x8 or 2x6, I don't have any need for that at this point. I'm just going to cut this into a cant, the biggest cant I can get, and all that means is I'm going to take the bark off and make it uh, four-sided, uh, flat on four sides. I'm going to probably make that into a cant, and uh, when the need does arrive, I will uh, go ahead and cut that into some bigger material. I keep all the small stuff and uh, cut that into the smaller material like the baseboard trim I'm making today. And that uh, that just allows me to maximize my uh, my big trees I have here because they're, uh, they're a limited resource. I don't have a ton of them. As you guys can see around you, my bush is um, kind of on the younger side. It uh, probably could be thinned and thus uh, maximize the... Uh, the diameter but uh you know that's how it is so i made some baseboards today you guys can see them down here big pile here another pile here i'm gonna go ahead and get this sticker just like you can see some of the other ones i'm not too particular in terms of the uh the sizing i tend to cut it on my table saw these scrap pieces i cut them at about an inch so i usually have about a one inch gap there and when i'm stacking them up i also try to leave a bit of a gap here as well in between subsequent pieces so I'm going to get those stacked up with the new stickers I made today and uh, then that'll probably do it for now. It is incredibly hot out today. I'm a Canadian and for those of you who are uh, from other countries and not Canada, you probably say to yourself, those guys are dealing with snow eight months out of the year and more like six months out of the year. But in the other months, uh, like this one, July, the humidity, it kicks in and it doesn't go away sometimes. And we've been in a high pressure system for a while now. And uh, this Canadian you're looking at right now is definitely struggling. So I either need to uh, go back down to Florida for a little bit of a uh, vacation and uh, really feel humidity. Or I need to, um, I don't know, get into better shape or acclimatize myself. Anywho, let's get down to it here. For me, because much of this wood is going to be used for trim and it's relatively thin, I'm going to be able to bend it. And that's okay. I want a little bit of flexibility there, hence why the material is the thickness it is. If I'm making dimensional lumber like 2x4, 2x6, you know, 2x8, and I want to build a wall with it or make some sort of a beam or joist with it, yes, I want it to be perfectly straight. And thus, I need to make this a little more flat than it is right now. So just keep that in mind. That's the reason why not all of these are stacked perfectly flat. Uh, it's just because I'm not going to be using them for anything structural. It's going to be requiring a little bit of flexibility to contour around my drywall, which I can guarantee is not perfectly, uh, perfectly straight. So I need a little bit of flexibility in my boards. Hence, I don't need it to be perfectly flat. You will probably get some drying here. You will probably get a little bit of bowing. And that's okay for me. As I mentioned, I would take it a bit more seriously if I were using this for structural material. If that's the case, I would make sure everything's nice and flat so it dries as straight as possible. Thank your drywaller, excuse me, thank your lumber maker when you get straight lumber because that means they took the time to make sure it was flat. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for me here today. It's a beautiful day out. As I mentioned in other videos, I like to poke away at things throughout the day. I'll do this for a few hours and I'll go, I don't know, split wood for a few hours and I'll go drive the tractor for a few hours. I like to do it all in a day. Keeps it a bit more entertaining or at least a little more, uh, a little more fun for me. If I were doing this day in and day out, although I really enjoy it, it probably would transition from that fun factor to, you know, sort of a chore and I don't want that to happen. Anyways, 
I'm going to take it easy here, guys. Go get a drink. And uh, I hope all you guys come back next time because I'm sure I'll be back out here or splitting wood or driving the tractor. Or... Actually, I have no idea what I'll be doing, but I'll be doing something. And I hope you guys are there to enjoy it. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care.